Your help is needed to help catch the gunman who opened fire on a group of students following a football scrimmage at Roxborough High School. The reward for the successful arrest and prosecution in this case is at $45,000. Yes. And as you know, surveillance cameras captured the whole thing. We can't show it to you because it's just brutal and horrific. Investigators say this light-colored SUV pulled up, waited six minutes for the scrimmage to end, and then came out of that SUV. They had a getaway driver. So there's six people involved, but five of them uh, came out with guns blazing. And as you know, a 14-year-old student at Saul High School was killed. Three others well, yeah, three others were hospitalized, but there was a fourth who was injured. Uh, the Gray's wound, I think, was treated at the scene on the fifth student. Police say one suspect stood over one of the victims, a 17-year-old, and fired until it looks like he ran out of bullets or the gun jammed or both. Officials also say there was a getaway driver, as I mentioned. The newly installed superintendent of school, Philadelphia School District, Dr. Tony Watlington Sr. expressed his disgust. Schools historically have been centers of communities and schools continue to be hubs of our communities and absolutely must be safe places for our students and staff. But every incident of gun violence that impacts our schools and communities jeopardizes the sense of safety and security that everyone in our schools deserve. So we want to bring in Lashana Coleman with the Philadelphia Federation of Teachers. And you cover several schools in the area, but two of the schools that you work with are Saul and Roxborough High School. Yes. So you visited them yesterday morning? I did, I what did. What was that like? It was really sad. Um, our kids were crying. Our kids mm -hmm. were ex just asking why. Like, why does this happen? You tell us that we're safe in schools. This is where we should be and then we weren't safe yesterday. Our teachers were trying to hold back their own tears mm -hmm. to console students. There was lots of hugging. There was lots of just, just questions. At both schools? At both schools. Yeah. And you even spoke with um, one of the teachers who had uh, one of the students, who's a, the student who died in her class. Nicholas, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, the teacher is a veteran teacher, wonderful, wonderful math teacher at Saul High School, and he's in her third period block on that day. And he, she said he went to the bathroom, and she looked up and said, oh, hold up, it's been a few minutes, you know, teachers check to see where he was. And they said, oh, they caught football, so he went to football. And she's like, oh, okay. So then, you know, the day went by. A few hours later, she said her phone was ringing, and she said, she's like, why are people calling me? And she looked and they were like, are you okay? What happened at the school? And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then she like turns on the news and she sees what's going on. And she said the first thing that went through her mind is that it had to be that student. It was Nicholas. Wow. And apparently he was not the one that was targeted. It seems like mm -hmm. police seem to think that two of the others football players, yes. and maybe 17 year old, I don't think was even playing football that day, mm -hmm. were targeted so he innocent. Yes, that's the part that just makes it so sad and just like incomprehensible for our kids and our teachers. The teachers describe the student as just a wonderful boy um, and then they only knew him for a few weeks. But when you've been teaching for a while, you know kids pretty well. Yeah. And they said he was just a very nice boy and they, they couldn't imagine why anyone would want to target him. This was right. prior to us having the information about him not being a target. You've been a, you've been a teacher 22 years, right? Yes. Okay. And so how do you handle this as teachers? We know that the, the students, they're back in school. Um, what do you say to them? How do you handle them going through such a traumatic situation like this? I think a big part of it is stopping and listening to kids. Um, you can't tell people how to process grief. Mm -hmm. So we've you know, learned over the years, unfortunately, because of so many tragedies in our city, that we stop, we listen, we let them do what they need to do. I was in a gym class, one of Nicholas's other teachers, and you know, she had conversations with the students, and then she told them, you, know, you can do basically what you need to do today. Some students sat on the side and just kind of sat silently. Some kids decided to play volleyball. Other kids decided to sit together and just talk about what happened. They talked about wanting to do something in his memory um, in a few days at the school as well. And what do you tell them, because you mentioned that one of the students, when hearing about them and what they were saying when they were expressing their emotions, that they don't feel safe. 
I, How do you respond to that? Because school is supposed to be a place where I know. It's, it's really hard. And as the adults, it's our job to make them feel safe. Yeah. So we remind them that there's police presence outside and that, you know, there certainly will be increased, increased police presence for the time being. So we, or as the adults, have to go back to the table and talk about what we can do mm -hmm. to make sure that our schools are the safe places that they deserve. I think students are scared all over the city, mm -hmm. yeah. not just at these like three schools, sure. boys, Latin, they're, they're suffering too over yes, there. Yes, absolutely. Know, but we should say, you're with the teachers union. Yes. Um, it takes some courage to stay and teach in this city, doesn't it? It does. It does. You know, our, but our teachers are here because they truly love our kids. Like, it, it's... It's the truth. They, they really love our kids. They love the schools. And they know that they're making a difference in ways that, they, that we see every day. I have students I talk to from 20 years ago still, and yep. they're nurses, and they're doing all kinds of wonderful things. And we know that a great public education does just that for our kids. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. it really is the equalizer. It feels like they have more work. I mean, in the past couple of years, it's not only being a teacher, it's also helping mm -hmm. them through a pandemic. And now mm -hmm. it's helping them through this and also being a counselor to them to go through situations like this. It is. And I think in recent times, teachers know more going in than they used to know in terms of what will be expected of them. No, oh, the and impact a teacher has mm -hmm. on a child is right. unbelievable. Right. Yes. Sometimes more than parents. Right. But they rise to the occasion. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hang in there. Oh, we'll be right back.